Today on Nerd Out, Permanentum and Gummy Worm. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about two different projects. One is called Permanentum and the other is called Gummy Worm. And so let's go ahead and dive in. So what is Permanentum? We'll talk about this one first. It's a smart contract protocol for storage bonds. And the idea here is that it ensures that your high value data that you want stored permanently stays permanent. So as you know, things like IPFS can become unpinned. Uh, Filecoin can also become lost. Um, so anything that you want stored permanently, this ensures that it stays permanent by putting some money in a storage bond and then you're ensuring that the people implementing those storage bonds on the other end of the, the agreement keep those files persistent. So this was created by uh, Kirikos and he also runs Spectrum Pool, but this is kind of his, his um, something he's work, been working on for a while. Um, and again, these, these things I'm talking about today are nothing I'm personally involved with. They're just ones that I found interesting and in, in talking to the people. So I'm just sharing, sharing what they're doing with you. So let's take a look at the Permanentum life cycle. We're gonna look at a diagram that Kirikos created. And so this is kind of the life cycle of, of a storage bond. So the customer has to have some high value data like IPFS data. Um, another example he gives is hyd Hydra transaction history. That one is really interesting because Hydra, you know, Hydra transaction history typically doesn't stick around, but maybe you need that to stick around for some reason. Maybe we'll get into that with gummy worm later. Um, but the idea is the customer then opens a storage bond. So it, it goes into an open status and this is a smart contract and it allows things to be, um, things to be uh, funded. So offers can be made into this storage bond. So we have two, two offers here coming in. We have, I'll call him Bob. Bob is, has an Iagon back end and uh, Sally here, she's, she has a Filecoin back end. So they both put an offer up on this particular storage bond. And then the, the person who opened the storage bomb, bond says, okay, I'm gonna select both of these offers. So I, I wanna make sure that my Hydra transaction history file is going to be backed up on both Igon and Filecoin. And so then they accept both of these these offers by funding the storage bond. Let's say they put up 200 ADA so that this bond can stick around for a while. And then once those are accepted, Sally and Bob, they upload the file to both Filecoin and Igon to make sure that it stays persistent. And then they confirm that that, uh, that, that deal is done. And then that bond lives, well, that was Sally confirming, then there's Bob confirming, <clears throat> and then you have a live storage bomb, bond, and so that's all been backed up. So to keep the storage bond alive, um, let's say that something happens and, and the original person loses their file, they can then ask to restore from one of these backup copies. And so Sally says, you know, here you go, Here, here's your uh, Hydra backup that I've stored for you if they need to reinflate re that or for some reason it became unpinned on IPFS. And then there's also a process to renew storage bonds. So these storage bonds have, the offers have a length to them. And as long as there's a balance on the bond, they can be renewed or auto renewed. Um, and so they can renew it for so many days. So the bond pays out to these people doing the storage every so often for the length of the offer. But as long as there's a balance in the storage bond, those can be uh, renewed. And so look at this case, um, storage deal renewed itself all by itself. So that's kind of what it is. And I wanna talk a little bit about um, Oh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So let's talk about 
the catalyst proposal that Kirikos has open. Um, this is to improve the the permanentum setup. So the idea is that they're going to integrate with Orcfax to do Oracle attestations of storage. So in other words, Orcfax will ensure that the provider of the storage bond offer has actually uploaded it to the given system. So in this case, um, Orcfax is going to be the Oracle for that. So if, if they say, hey, I've put it up on Filecoin, Orcfax will attest that they have actually uploaded it to Filecoin and are providing that as a back, backup. Uh, additional applicants on this one is Peter Van Garderen. Most of you may may know him. He's he's pretty active in the space. He's been doing a number of projects. Orcfax is, is one of them. Uh, he's an archivist himself by trade, so he, he definitely knows the space. Um, yeah, so here's here's the details. Um, again, the links to this will be down in the description if you want to check out these particular Catalyst proposals. But yeah, essentially Orcfax will attest to the file Filecoin storage contracts. But again, take a look at this in your own time. Um, I just wanted to quickly go through it. So let's jump back in. Uh, let's talk about Gummy Worm. What is Gummy Worm? This is the working code name for a Sunday Labs project. And the idea is it integrates Hydra and utilizes it in a custom way. So it has near instant transaction finalization. That's due to the fact that it's running on Hydra. Uh, the unique aspect of it is it allows normal users to pop into and out of the Hydra head while it's running. So normally Hydra is the, the interested parties come into the Hydra head, they do a set of transactions between themselves, you know, think of it more like uh, playing a game of poker where everybody who wants to play in that particular game opens a head, there's a bunch of transactions that happen, you know, with the cards, and then at the end of it they all settle up to see who won what money. Uh, this is a little different. This is where you'll have a Hydra head that won't close, uh, open and close for individual things it'll stay open for a while longer and it'll allow normal users to pop into and out of the hydra head uh, using smart contracts and these decentralized validators so basically they're they're building a a bridge to utilize hydra kind of as a it's it's not quite a layer two but it's like a layer two um, where it can run really fast transactions you can pop into it pop out of it and it'll close down and close out the head every so often and take these snapshots of the existing Hydra uh, state so that that existing state can then be used to spin up a new opening of the next version of it. So it's kind of a continually opening and closing this Hydra head every, maybe every several weeks or so. Uh, but it's really interesting technology. It's going to be open source, so it can be utilized by protocols beyond just Sunday or the Sunday swap decks would be uh, one, one thing that could utilize it. Uh, we've already seen a little bit of what it's capable of. There was a very early centralized version that was demonstrated at Rare Bloom last year, but of course that was not not decentralized, and that's really what the next version of Gummy Worm is designed to be. Um, another disclaimer, I'm not on this particular project, but I, I am invited to be in the room as that team is building it, and I'm there to provide direction and feedback to this team. So if you look at any of their Catalyst proposals, I don't receive any funding from them. That goes to the team that's actually building it, but I am quasi-involved just as kind of a, an advice guy on that. So here's links to both of these, there are two of these Catalyst proposals. Um, now this isn't, the, the Sunday Labs one is not for the whole Gummy Worm protocol. There's a couple that are related to it. So the Sunday team themselves is building Gummy Worm. And there are several things tangentially related to Gummy Worm, and this is one of them. This is the uh, Hydra Transaction Stream plugin. So let's take a look at that proposal real quick. Um, 
And so the purpose of this one is they are planning to submit an upgrade to Hydra. So this team is going to go and build on the existing Hydra protocol, and this will get merged back into Hydra itself. And the idea of this protocol is to improve integration with the Hydra node. So right now, it's very difficult to get information about transactions, transaction history, what's actually happening in real time on the Hydra node. And this is to build a plugin that will allow those transactions to be streamed out of Hydra. And so you could have something like if you built a gummy worm validator node that needs to watch what's going on in Hydra, um, it would then be able to use this API to get all of that, all of those transactions and watch what's happening. So if somebody like wants to come out of the Hydra head and back to mainnet, those validators can be watching for the exit transaction for a particular user and make sure that those, uh, they get cashed out back to mainnet. And so that's kind of what this particular proposal is for. Uh, but again, it's, it's useful for things well beyond just gummy worm. So you could use Kupo, Carp, or uh, the idea is to easily read from this uh, transaction stream plugin. And the idea is to use a lot of the same indexing functionality that the Cardano Layer 1 already uses. So existing Layer 1 tools could also be used on this this layer two. And there's also a mention of this uh, transaction archive file format that they're building. And they mentioned gummy worm here that they're building on top of, of Hydra. So this, they could use this archive file and this archive file could be used to quickly spin up a new version of Hydra and pipe all of these transactions into it so that the new um, Hydra head could open up with the same state as maybe a previous one that had closed down. And so there's, there's a lot of neat technology they're building there. Anyway, check out this proposal. Um, and then also uh, click on the people's names that are on the proposals to see some of their other related proposals that they're working on. So yeah, I just mentioned this. Click on some of the names, the proposals, you know, click on Artem, click on Pi from Sunday. Um, click on Kyrakos to see if he has any other proposals. Um, and then I'm also working on a number of proposals with some of the teams I'm working on. They're not in this video. I may talk about them in the future. I may not, but, um, since I'm talking Catalyst, I wanted to link some of those down below as well. So please check out those, uh, on your, uh, in your free time. And that's all I've got for today. I hope you found this interesting and useful. There's a lot of neat stuff coming up in Catalyst. So it's time to start paying attention to what people are building or are planning to build. And with that, nerd out.